Hello everyone, it's Snady, and today we'll be testing out the Kylie Cosmetics Wild Side Press Powder Palette. As you beautiful people know, this is about the products and not the people behind them. Any tip you may have with them, please cast it away because this is a channel of positive energy. Okay? Thank you. Oh my cute little kitties, how you doing today? I hope wherever you're at in the world, you are having a fantastic day so far. I myself am doing wonderful. It is a beautiful day outside. After I'm done filming, I'm gonna hop my ass outside and edit. And I am kind of excited to try this palette. Like, it's been a long ass time since we've tried a Kylie Cosmetics product, mainly because I gave up on them. Like, I think some of their eyeshadow palettes are really, really pretty, but so fucking overpriced. This palette, I've not even opened it up or looked at it yet, but it was $50 after shipping. I'm looking at the picture of it online, and it looks like it could be a decent size. Like, I'm hoping, like, it's around this size. So 50 bucks for a palette that big, that's not that bad. It's actually $38 online. But in the past, every time I've ordered a product from them to review, by the time it actually gets to my house, they've already launched a new product. And to me, when brands just, like, pump shit out, that really cheapens them. And I don't want to pay that kind of money from, like, a cheap-ass brand. You know what I mean? The quality might be stunning, but it just kind of makes it less special, you know? But again, if the quality of this is really good, then whatever. Let's go ahead and open this up. I am on the website. Like I said, this retails for $38. There's my little order. No That's it? I've seen hemorrhoids bigger than this. I really paid $50 for like a Sephora sample size? Oh my god, I thought this was gonna be so much bigger. Okay, well, okay. I mean, the packaging is very cute. If I were a straight man, I'd probably hang this up in my garage or on the ceiling above my bed. But really, that is, huh. This is definitely expectation versus reality. Like when you finally get to sleep with that person that you've wanted and they pull this out. Let's open this little baby up. Ooh, fuck. I do love glitter on packaging, which this has plenty of, but it's the kind of glitter that gets everywhere. Good. Oh my goodness. I do like the weight of this palette. Like it has a heaviness to it that kind of feels luxurious. And it is cute packaging, albeit very cheesy. But let's go ahead and open it up and see what we're working with. Ooh, that actually is very, very pretty. I am absolutely positive that I have every single one of these shades in my makeup collection, but still together as a whole, it's pretty, but I'm not really sure why that's there. It's kind of throwing me off, but also I kind of appreciate it because you could create something entirely different different if you incorporated that gray. But does it make a lot of sense? Not really. There's so much glitter. Let me go ahead and feel a couple of these before we do our actual swatches. Let's try Exotic Babe. That looks pretty. Ooh, super creamy. And I do want to try Wild Side. Oh my god, that feels very nice as well. And let's do Cheetah Girl. Ooh, that's lovely. I will be honest though, we did just test the new Cool Tone palette from ColourPop and these feel very, very similar in texture. I don't know. Are they even related? I know there's always comparisons between Kylie and ColourPop. I don't know if maybe they have the same lab or what, but here is that one. Very nice. That one is great as well. And then here's the shimmer. That's okay. A little bit splotchy, but it's still pretty. I will say just based on swatches, which really doesn't mean jack shit. It's how they perform in the eye, but the swatches do seem very, very nice. Not professional quality, but still good. But $38 for this, that to me is a big no. Nonetheless, I am still really excited to swatch into a look with this. So y'all know the song. Are you ready? It's watching time. Ha, ha, ha. And here we have the top two rows. I'm gonna be totally honest with you. They did swatch very nicely. Were they the most pigmented or vibrant things ever? No, not at all. They are kind of a little bit on the chalky side, but still very manageable. Like, they seem decent. What is interesting to me, though, is that they have these beautiful pressed glitters in here and even a duochrome, yet on the website for, like, the model pictures, they chose the most basic makeup looks ever. Like, the looks are beautiful and the models are stunning, but I wanna see this actually put to work. Like, I do not see a good representation of this palette anywhere on there. That's just one of my critiques. It's not like their company isn't doing well or anything. But for a little ass palette that's almost $40, it would be more helpful to have something more than just like a basic ass smoky eye. But campaign images aside, the quality does seem to be pretty good so far. And here we have the last row. These really did swatch quite nicely. This is just one dip into the pan with no primer on my hand. They look great. They're not splotchy. They are vibrant. I guess as vibrant as you could get for these colors. But they seem nicely pigmented. Very soft. I'm really excited to do a look with these. And for primer today, I'm gonna go in with Touch and Soul, no problem. And then for foundation, I'm gonna once again try this NARS Soft Matte. Oh my god, I do not like this stuff, but I'm determined to get it to work because I paid so much for this and it's past the return date. I don't think I've used it with this primer, so we're gonna try it. Oh my god, I look like a lemon. Girl, look how fucking orange you look, girl. Wow, 
Oh, this just looks genuinely awful on my skin. You know what though, damn it? One day I'm gonna find the right combination for this, even if it means using an avocado as a primer. I don't even care. I will say though, this does look the best that I've gotten it, so we're on the right track. Then for Squealer, I'm gonna go in with my new favorite, Instant Age Rewind by Maybelline. Fortunately, I apply so much of this shit that it kind of masks the foundation. And then I'm gonna take some Laura Mercy Translucent Setting Powder right under the eyes, and I'm actually gonna leave it on there to catch any fallout that we might have from the shadow palette. Ooh, what? With that concealer, this foundation actually doesn't look that bad. Fuck. Maybe we finally found the right combination. It only took like three months. And I think I want to do two different looks today. So let's start on this side. And I kind of want to do like a glittery cut crease. Like who the fuck am I? I hate glitter. But I'm just kind of feeling it today. So let's do it. And typically I like to start highlighting my brow bone first. So let's dip into Wild at Heart. And I'm just going to press it right on the base of the brow right there. Oh my God, that is great pigmentation. I mean, there is a little bit of fallout, but it's not that bad at all. <gasps> oh, I like that. Y'all, I am totally rooting for this palette. Like, I really hope that it actually is worth the price. The last palette that I reviewed of theirs totally was not, but that was probably two or three years ago. And just based off of the swatches, I think they may have switched their formula up a bit. But next, I want to dip into this kind of mustardy yellow, which is Seeing Stripes. Oh my god. This has a lot of kickback, which I don't really mind as long as it stays in the pan, which it totally does. It's the fallout that you really got to be careful of. But let's go ahead and place this right along the crease and I'm going to blend this back and forth. Ooh, that's a really pretty color. Not the most pigmented. I'm going to pick back up some of the kickback. Oh, I like that. Initially, it's the slightest bit splotchy even after you work it around a bit. But if I keep going in, I'm finding that that splotchiness dissipates. Sometimes pressed pigments or pressed powders in this case do work a little bit differently. You kind of have to pack them on and then blend them out. I'm not sure if this palette is pressed powders because it has ingredients that aren't technically eye safe or because it is a little bit more pigmented than an eyeshadow. I don't have my glasses on, so I could be completely wrong, but I don't really see any shades that say not intended for the eyes. But once you do build it on, I think it looks really, really nice. Like, that's a lovely color, is it not? This is with probably four dips. And like I always fucking say on this channel, I would rather have a shadow that's buildable than something that's too pigmented. Because blending out a shadow that just has too much pigment to it is very, very hard, and that's not the kind of hard that I want to work with. So yes, there's that color. Really, really pretty. Next, I think I'm going to build up this orange. So let's dip into a cheetah. And I'm going to start by stippling that on and kind of packing it right inside the socket and then slowly working it up the crease line. I don't want to cover up that yellow. I just want to make a nice clean transition. But those colors go together so harmoniously. I love a good orange and yellow combo. Ugh. And even though this orange shadow now is going over another shadow, it's still laying down. Like it doesn't need to go directly onto a wet primer. But I am noticing that the more I blend it out, it's almost turning like grayish brown mixed with like a greenish color. I don't know because like I press it on and it's really pretty but then when I blend it out it's just transforming which is a really common occurrence when it comes to pressed pigments so I'm not that surprised. This happened a lot with like the Pro Novena palettes not comparing the quality at all. It's just the fact that they are pressed pigments. So if you do get a palette like this just be aware that it might transform the slightest bit. Still though very very pretty and they blend out extremely effortlessly. So far I do think this is a pretty beginner friendly palette. You just gotta kind of know how to work the shit. So I'm gonna go in with one final dip. Honestly, this is probably my sixth or seventh dip into this orange. It just keeps turning into that greenish color. I don't know if it's because of that mustardy shade that I laid down first, but I really just want that fucking orange shade to stay. Next, I'm gonna deepen it a little bit with some Feline Fine. And I'm gonna keep this shade pretty low on the crease, but I'm still gonna kind of press it into the socket. I don't wanna cover up all the shades that I laid down before. I don't know what the fuck you're seeing, but in person, you can definitely tell that it goes red to orange to yellow. And I really want to keep that nice transition. And with the amount of shadows that I packed on my eye, usually I would have some sort of follow-up, but there is nothing under there. Like, see how clean that bitch is? Like, damn. I'm not yet going to say whether or not this palette is worth $38, but it's really doing a good job so far. The only thing is that I am having to dip in so much. Like, this is probably my sixth dip into this red, only because the moment I start blending it out, it kind of disappears. The other shadows seemed fine, but when I go like that, it's great. But then when I kind of blend it out, it just turns into a patchy shit show. Okay, so that is probably as good as we'll get it. Along the way, I did kind of lose my transition shades just because I had to keep packing and packing. I'm gonna gently blend these edges out with whatever yellow is left on that brush that I used before. And then before we cut this, I really want to test this darker black out. So let's dip into that with a teeny tiny little brush. And I'm gonna place this right along the crease line. I don't really care if any gets on my actual eyelid because I'm just gonna end up covering it up with Consqueeler. Ooh, that's a beautiful black. It's 
extremely pigmented, but I'm gonna try to create kind of a little bit of a wing with this. And so I'm gonna build it up really heavily on this outer corner. And once again, literally no fucking fallout under my eyes. Like this is magical so far. All right, so there is that. That was pretty simple to get to. Let's go ahead and cut the crease. And with a flat brush, I'm gonna dip into Chrome Kitty. Maybe nothing really wants to pick up. Oop, wait, no, you just have to be a little bit forceful. No, that is not gonna work. Maybe instead, let's try Lucky Leo. I do always recommend using glitters with a glitter glue. I happen to be allergic, and so I kind of have to rely on the dampness of the concealer to adhere, but I'm gonna take this with my finger instead, which with a finger, it is applying perfectly. If you don't wanna use your finger, you can totally use like a foam sponge, but the glitter is actually staying on my eye. There's still very minimal fallout. There's a little bit, but that's why we have the powder down, but that is so beautiful. And just to spice this look up, I am gonna dip back into Lucky Leo and gently apply it over that gold. Oh, that combination is fantastic. They're adhering to each other very nicely, and I don't see glitter flying everywhere like I did with the packaging, so at least this glitter is good. Then to even out this edge, I'm gonna tap on a little bit more of that black and kind of fade it towards the inner eye, as well as a tiny bit more of that red and orange combined. Then for the lower lash, I'm gonna start with some black right along the lashes and kind of drag this wing that I created so that it meets. Ah, oh, yeah. Yes, honey. And I'm gonna dust a little bit of that orange right underneath that. And then there was the tiniest bit of glitter fallout, so let me wipe all that shit away. And I think I'll leave this eye alone for now, but I really like that. It was super easy. Let's go ahead and work on the other eye. Oh god, I got glitter on my lips from the fucking packaging. Maybe I'll try using the gray on this side. Why the fuck not? But let's go ahead and start with our first shade, Heart of a Lion. And I'm gonna take this right on the brow bone and bring it down to the crease line. And I think once again, I'm gonna go in with a bit of black right here on the outer corner. I don't know how actually wearable this look will be, but we can kind of play around with the shadows at least. So I'll place that right about there and then blend it onto the crease. The black really does seem to be pretty good. I'll give it that. And then with a clean fluffy brush, I'm just going to gently sweep over those edges to kind of diffuse them. So it'd probably be so much easier if you did like the tape trick and put a piece of tape there. I don't know why I didn't do that, but it's fine. We'll make it work. Then I'm going to dip into this gray and kind of work it from the black towards the inner eye which that gray is lovely. Hmm, okay. It still doesn't really make sense to me in this palette because probably a very select number of people would actually use it, but I do kind of appreciate that I'm able to get something a little bit different with this palette. And then for the lower lash, I'm just gonna smoke out those same colors, keep it very, very simple. And here we are with our final looks, honey. I'm gonna be real with you. I actually like these. I'm still not sold on that price tag, like $38. This doesn't really emulate that price, especially with shipping. Like maybe with free shipping. I don't know if they have like over a certain amount you get free shipping, but like even at $38, I don't think it's worth that. But is it a good palette? I do think it's actually pretty decent. The quality to me isn't really anything better than what you could get with like ColourPop or even at the drugstore, but I was easily able to create two pretty looks. It is fairly user-friendly. You do kind of have to work around things. It's not like the normal shadow where you can just slap it on, blend it out and call it good. You do kind of have to pack things on, layer them up, go back and forth. And so if that isn't something that you want to fuck with, I say skip it. But if you do like this color scheme and you are willing to finagle things a little bit, I say grab it. Shockingly, I love the way the glitters look. There was no fallout with any of the shadows. And if there was, I was able to dust it away. And so aspects of this palette like that are really good. But is it perfect? No. And I do think that for the money, you could probably get bigger, you could get better, you could get more. But I will say that out of everything that I've tested from this brand, this is probably my favorite thing so far. So now I'm really curious about their other palettes. Let me know down in the comments below if you want me to try future collections. There probably will never be a palette that they'll launch that I'll think is actually worth the price, but the quality does seem to be there. So again, do I recommend it? If this speaks to you, I do, but I just don't think it's worth the price. Maybe shipping to wherever you're at is cheaper for you, or maybe 50 bucks on that palette isn't that bad for you. But there you go, my sexy little beasts. Thank you so much for being here. I love having you. And if you'd like to support me and my channel a little bit more, please feel free to join us on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash poplux. There you get videos a day early, you get Patreon only content. There's lots of little nuggets over there. Plus, best part, it is cheap, fun, and fancy just like me. And like always, please be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell down below so that you're notified anytime I upload a new video. Don't forget my newest collection of highlighters, including Black Ice, which does change from black to white, is available at thepoplix.com. Also, my latest album, Kiss of Fame, is available everywhere online that music is sold. Thank you so much to everyone who's supporting them. Comment down below, let me know what you thought of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at official and you can follow me online at thepoplux.com. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all, and I will see you again soon. Bye. Yeah.